today. Bill de Blasio says he's banning all large gatherings in New York City, <coughs> except Black Lives Matter protests. Uh, the left is trying to cancel Goya Foods, and AOC says something dumb again because it's a day ending in day. We've got a lot coming up, and it starts right now. That. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the news and why it matters. Happy Friday. I am Sarah Gonzalez today joined by Pat Gray of Pat Gray Unleashed, which you can find on Blaze TV, Blaze Radio, wherever you get your podcasts. Am I missing anything, Pat? I don't think so. OK, I about it covers it. Oh, mm -hmm. YouTube. YouTube, right. Okay, so you were missing something. <laughs> Wait, who's running your social media right here? Me not or me. you? No, even, not me. <laughs> Jason Buttrell also joins us, chief researcher of the Glenn Beck program. Thank you for being here. Which you can find him at the News and Why It Matters every <laughs> like, Wednesday. Usually. I don't know. He's going to be on Stu's show later tonight, <laughs> I guess. I don't know where you can. You don't want to find this guy, trust me. Yeah. He belongs on places on the internet where you do not want to go. Uh, okay, let's get into the headlines of the day. So New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio said last night on CNN with Wolf Blitzer that he is banning all large public gatherings, all large events through September. Now, curiously, he did make an exception for one specific thing. I'll just let you watch the clip big outdoor concerts and it means things like parades you know things that here in the city can mean not just thousands tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of people it's just not time for that now what about <laughs> protests if people want to march down fifth avenue are they going to be allowed to do so look wolf this is always an area of real sensitivity if you're just talking about health we would always say hey folks you know stay home if you can but we understand at this moment in history, people are talking about the need for historic changes. I mean, today in New York City, you know, recognizing the power and the meaning of the message Black Lives Matter, which we did in front of Trump Tower today, uh, this is a historic moment of change. We have to respect that, but also say to people, the, the kinds of gatherings we're used to, the, the parades, the fairs, we mm -hmm. just can't have that while we're focusing on health right now. Oh, I can't, I can't wait to get your thoughts on this. I, oh, I think I broke Pat. <laughs> How do you even comment on that? Seriously, that is so insane. That is so hypocritical. Uh, so unfair that, what do you even say about that? Yeah. I mean, not only, not only is he canceling parades and other gatherings, but just the other day he talked about churches yes. too and how he can keep people from going to church because, you know, Black Lives Matter is important. Uh, they're doing important things. Oh, okay, church. I think we kind of told us how you feel about <laughs> religion and the First Amendment. Uh, that is unbelievable. Such a good point. Uh, that's when we first started raising the alarm bells on this, when we were like, wait a minute, they're telling people they can't go to church for crying out loud? Yeah. They're arresting churchgoers because they're sitting in their cars in the, dr in the in parking, the parking lot. lot. But you're still, but they were like, no, we can do this because it's universal across everything. You know, like we're telling everyone. So if that's the case, this shows you it's bull crap. Yeah. He's not. It's, if someone had the balls, they would bring, <laughs> if the Justice Department had the balls, they would bring a First mm. Amendment lawsuit against uh, de Blasio. Uh, can yeah. they now? Because he's clearly saying, yeah. no, you can't go to church. You right. can't have a Jewish funeral in right. the street, mm -hmm. but you can, that part of the First Amendment doesn't apply. But this part of the First Amendment applies? Bull crap. Someone should sue his butt hard. Yeah. Uh, Pat, I want to I wanna zero in, too, on the comment that when he said, if you're just talking about health, we would always say, hey, folks, stay home if you can. Aren't we told by them time and time again that that's the only thing that we're talking about? We are talking about mm -hmm. health. You have to stay home. You have to wear a mask at all times. I just read a headline from Texas, of all places, San Antonio local news, that said that the uh, emergency management division of Texas was saying, well, you may want to start wearing a mask in your house, too, <laughs> actually. <laughs> so it's like, well, I mean, aren't we told that oh, we man. are supposed to bend over backwards and do all these things because it's, oh, it's about everyone's health and you don't want grandma to die absolutely and we're looked on as if we're genocidal maniacs if you're not wearing a mask yeah. you know I, I get a kick out of the people i see driving down the freeway alone <laughs> wearing a mask yes. hey stupid you know you could be passing out any minute from <laughs> co2 exposure uh that's not safe we've had a person who who died in a car accident from that mm. and it's just None of this makes any sense. Of course, it's about, 
it's not about health because you're you're protesting for Marxism, for Black Lives Matter, the the Marxist organization that wants to def- destroy the nuclear family. I I don't I can't begin to understand that. Why, why is it okay if those people go out and get sick and then take it to all the places that they tell us we'd be taking our illness to and infecting everybody else? It doesn't make any sense. Especially, Jason, if, to add on to what Pat said, they also have told us that the virus itself is racist <laughs> and it affects black people more, more right. than white people. So what they're really, right. they're just putting a bunch of black people together and leading them to slaughter, I guess. They're even saying that they're going to prioritize, they want to prioritize the vaccine when it comes out so that it goes to different, as if different colors of skin is more susceptible to this freaking virus. This is a smart virus. I mean, it really can. If it can can say, hey. If you're woke enough, it doesn't, it doesn't affect you. It it knows if you're on the left or the right Mm -hmm. political spectrum, Mm -hmm. apparently. Mm -hmm. That's pretty dang good If you go to a Trump rally, you're probably going to die from it. Black Lives Matter protest. Test, you're good. It's truly amazing to In see. Fact, I think uh, that it's so smart that if it's a Black Lives Matter rally, not only do you not get COVID, but it, it cures whatever disease you might have. If it's not, if even a non-COVID-19 disease, it's so it's I mean, going to a Black Lives Matter rally is really a healthy thing to do because <laughs> it'll clear up. It'll clear up uh, combination skin. It'll clear up rashes. Uh, so it's just science, folks. It's just, it's just science. I, uh, I love these like these surges in coronavirus and how they're so they're trying to blame it on like the southern states because they reopened, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, they're not. You definitely cannot say that it was because of. Although some st- I've seen some cities have started saying they, that's the, they saw the surge after a lot of these. Who would have thought? You know, thousands of people out there, you know, rioting right. or maybe protesting would spread this virus. Mm-hmm. But no, no, it's it's the it's the people. It's it's like like states like Texas that had 25% occupancy in frickin' Wendy's. Mm. They're the ones causing the surge. <laughs> it's not the thousands rioting in the streets. Or right? the people coming in from the border, which is why we're seeing the surge in cases near the border. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and you're seeing them in border states. Um, but even the surge, Sarah, yeah. is I, I, I want to even the surge, I think, is overhyped. It is. Yes. Yes. We are seeing cases. cases. Yeah. Cases are going up. Mm-hmm. Deaths are still going down. But I mean, this surge, it's still nowhere near. We've seen one surge and it was in New York yeah. or, pro- or probably L.A. In those two areas, there were surges and our current surge were nowhere near the levels that they were then. And that's what they're freaking out now in the southern states. And by the way, it's surging big time in 20 to 29 year olds, mm-hmm. which are the same people that are going to these rallies. Yep. Right. I mean, it's just a coincidence. It's just a coincidence. Also, just a coincidence that uh, the contact tracers uh, are told not to ask people if they have been to a Black Lives Matter protest in New York. Unbelievable. Also, just a coincidence. Mm. Nothing to see here, people. Uh, I also want to touch on something else that Bill de Blasio mentioned, which was the same day he did, uh, he banned large gatherings to stop coronavirus except Black Lives Matter protests. He also joined a Black Lives Matter crew on Millionaire's Row when he uh, they painted a big Black Lives Matter mural outside Trump Tower. This is what the mayor of the most major city in the country, this is what he's spending his time doing, <laughs> I guess, is trolling uh, Trump. Here is just a little bit of Mayor Bill de Blasio outside Trump Tower talking to uh, the Black Lives Matter protesters. Watch. We are making a statement today of what we value in New York City. We are making a statement of what matters. When I announced that we would be doing this here, President Trump said that we would be denigrating the luxury of Fifth Avenue. Let me tell you, we are not denigrating anything. We are liberating Fifth Avenue. We are uplifting Fifth Avenue. Who built this city? Who built this nation and never got the acknowledgement, the recognition, the compensation? So when we say Black Lives Matter, there is no more American statement. There's no more patriotic statement because there is no America without Black America. I, for one, am just glad that they finally figured out how to solve racism. It was the mural. Yeah, it's over. 
it's, I mean, it's done. They did it. We finally did it. <laughs> Congratulations, everyone. We finally did it. Really good social distancing going on there, too. Isn't that great? Right, it is. And I yeah. don't I don't think he's, is he wearing a mask? No, he is wearing a mask there. But I did see some pictures of him while he was, Pat, as you said, that close to all of those people, no mask. Yeah. Well, while he was babbling his nonsense, he was not wearing a mask. So I, it's... This is the, one of the most incredible things I think I've ever seen in my life. I mean, we've seen some incredible things lately, too. This has to be right near the top. I, I wouldn't have believed this possible a year ago. Jason? I don't. I mean, it, what's crazy is you can call out who Black Lives Matter is. Like, or, Actually, you can't. But right. we have. So it's not a secret who they are. But you, you have supposedly mainstream legit politicians now that make these very public statements in front of the president in front of Trump Tower which again you're, you're telegraphing this is all political mm -hmm. it's nothing about the movement it's all political I mean what has the president done that's anti I won't say black lives matter but black lives like what, what has he done has actually a very a stronger track record than President Obama right I on uh, uh, black lives and the jobs. economy and jobs when it mm -hmm. comes to uh, black Americans. And then he's got the criminal justice reform bill that he signed into law. I mean, that's a pretty strong record, mm -hmm. comparatively speaking. Uh, you're, you're telegraphing, and that's what I hate. This is what I hated with the president's executive order on, on you know, police department yeah. and all that stuff. And I've talked about that before. I hated that the GOP jumped right in with that, too. They tried to beat Democrats to it. Why are you... Why do you constantly get outmaneuvered by the left? Yeah. Why? The, they wanted you to do this because then you basically say, yeah, we have a systemic problem with policing in the United States. Bull crap. No, we don't. Yeah. There's a few bad apples. That's to be expected in any industry across every, every industry in the entire world since the, since the dawn of man. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's going to happen. But to, to give in and to say that there is a systemic problem is total bull crap. I, I tell you, I'm... Well, the numbers don't back that up. <laughs> no, not at the all. The numbers back up the opposite. Exactly. That more whites uh, are, are killed every year. More unarmed whites are killed by, by police than blacks. Uh, last year, it was, I believe it was 19 to 9. Um, and you might say, well, that's not proportional to the population. And that's uh, that's true. But there's not a massive systemic situation happening there when it's nine people right. who were unarmed that were killed. And you don't even know that all of those nine were unjustified. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't I don't even know what the systemic racism is that they're talking about. Show it to me in the system. Where's the system wide racism? It was not built into the country, quite the opposite. The Constitution allowed for slavery to have an end mm -hmm. at the founding of the nation. Uh, and it took a while to actually end everything, but they ended the slave trade. They projected the end of the slave trade for, what, 15 years later or whenever it was uh, from the signing of the Constitution. And, and so they set the stage with that. That is not systemic racism. I've noticed, uh, just as, as a personal anecdote before we, we move on, I've noticed that a lot of people who shout about systemic racism don't actually know what the word systemic means. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, because right. you ask them for evidence yeah. of, okay, show, show us. It to us. Yeah, and they're We're... like, well, I have a black friend who was once said, they someone said really mean things to them in the street. Yeah, that's not, like, a, that's that's not, not system systemic. That's not system-wide racism. <laughs> no. That's not built into our system. Words mean things. If, if, if we're, Last word. If we're systemic suck at it hardcore <laughs> yeah. because they're trying to get people from other countries are trying to get into our country so they can make so much money and send it back to the other country yeah. so we're so racist against them they make more money here than they do back in their countries well, makes no sense i mean we do suck at a lot of things right now here in the country so <laughs> wouldn't surprise me i'm just saying all right we've got more coming up including more orange man bad yeah that's what you're here to see more orange man bad here on this friday first we want to thank our sponsor keeps this segment. Uh, so those of you, maybe, you know, there are some guys out there who feel a little bit self-conscious because they might be losing their hair. I'm not looking at anyone mm. at the table at all. I, there's no one that would, Hot in here all of a sudden. Who might know what that's like. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but there's nothing to be embarrassed about. It 
it's just a gene. It's just, it's a hereditary thing. You can't do anything about it. So let's talk options here. Okay, you can go to a doctor for a hair loss treatment prescription, and then you can go to the pharmacy, and you gotta pay a whole bunch of money, uh, and then you gotta keep doing it, keep going back to the pharmacy to get it refilled, or you can try Keeps from the comfort of your own home. You will get the same doctor-recommended FDA-approved hair loss treatment, but Keeps gives you the generic version, so you're saving like half the cost just from getting the generic versions, and you can be super lazy, which I think Jason would also like. <laughs> I don't mean to keep picking on him, but I mean, he's right there and he's an easy target, so. She does mean to keep picking. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all online. You can do it from your couch, uh, from wherever you are comfortable doing it. You just answer a few questions online. You take a couple pictures of your hair. A licensed doctor will review the info and recommend the right hair loss treatment for you. They ship it directly to you, and you're already saving money. On top of that, we've got a deal for you. You can go to keeps.com slash why you will get half off that's 50% off of your first order so you're saving money on the generic and you're saving money using this link win-win go to keeps.com slash why that's w-h-y keeps.com slash why Uh, Goya Foods president which, and CEO, which by the way, Goya Foods, if you are not familiar, eh, these are my people, all right? Goya <laughs> Foods, uh, one of the most popular Hispanic food brands that you can find in most local supermarkets. Uh, so Goya Foods president and CEO said uh, on Thursday, yesterday, he got in a lot of hot water because he dared I'm sorry. I hope that everyone is sitting. You guys are sitting down for this. I'm very glad. I hope that everyone else who is watching is also sitting down for this. If you're driving, you may want to pull off to the side of the road. It's very disturbing. His comments he made, um, he actually praised Trump and said that the country was blessed to have him as president. I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm too offended. I, I, can we just play the clip? Thank you. <laughs> We're all truly blessed at the same time to have a leader like President Trump, who was a builder. And that's what my grandfather did. He came to this country to build, to grow, to prosper. And so we have a, an incredible builder, and we pray. We pray for our leadership, our president, and we pray for our country that we will continue to prosper and, and to grow. Wow. <laughs> So he said, blessed and pray. Both. How heinous was that? Wow. That man doesn't deserve to live. <laughs> Am I right? Oh, well, I mean, you're. Wow. You, I mean, you're pretty much saying what a lot of people are saying. Uh, it didn't take long for the hashtag boycott Goya oh, yeah. to surface on the internet. Uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, Julian Castro, uh, many people took aim at the company, said that we should all stop buying their products because, again, they dared, he dared say, we're blessed to have Trump. He prays for the president. That's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. Uh, so he went on today. He was on with Fox News. And uh, here's what he had to say to all of the people who were pushing him to, you know, apologize, saying he was going to be canceled. Here's his response. Hey, Bob, are you getting a boycott? That's what I've heard because you had the audacity to show up at the president's invitation and say some positive things about him. You know, Brian, yes. I, and, you know, it's suppression of, of speech. In, in 2012, eight years ago, I was called by Michelle Obama to Tampa. And they were mentioning to launch a My Plate thing, which we put on. It's, it's putting the, the nutritional pyramid into a plate of portion control. <clears throat> they wanted to approach the African-American community, the Hispanic community, to eat more nutritionally. So they called on us as the most recognized Hispanic brand in the United States, and I went. I went to the White House later, and I introduced at, uh, in Hispanic Heritage Month President Obama. And so you're allowed to uh, talk good or to praise uh, one president, but you're not allowed, when I was called to be part of this commission to aid in economic and educational prosperity, and you make a, a positive comment, all of a sudden, that's not acceptable. So, you know, I'm not apologizing for uh, saying, and especially if you're called by the President of the United States, you're going to say, no, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm busy, no thank you. I didn't say that to the Obamas, and I didn't say that to President Trump. So there you have it. He will not apologize. I just don't see, I don't think, Goy is too good.
Goya is too good. They're not, you're not going to cancel Goya, all right, because people like me are still going to go buy their products. Uh, Pat, what do you make of all this? It's just like Chick-fil-A, chicken too tasty. Yeah, <laughs> Goya exactly. too good. Goya too um, good. Yeah, he's, uh, I'm kind of surprised he's, he's sticking with it yeah. because usually when you start to get that, that pushback, uh, the mob wins almost every time. So he shows some serious giblets here by saying, no, I'm not going to apologize for what I said. I said good things about Obama, too. I'm going to say good things about this president because the economy is good. Mm -hmm. And we have a right to do that as Americans. It just shows how bad the, the uh, Trump derangement syndrome is with so many people in this country. If, if you are a person that they perceive should be on their side, you may not say a single good word about him. I mean, it is it's kind of amazing, too, because they're really missing out. If they would say good things about the president, they could be his friend. It's true. And they could influence him. That's a great oh, point. Gosh, he do. responds to that. He really does. Like, he yeah. responds to positive feedback. I'm kind of glad that they're so insane because <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, they, if they played it smart... They might be able to get some of their agenda pushed through with him. True, especially considering uh, you know what Pat said. Especially considering that's he was a Democrat for right. most of his life. Yeah. yeah. So these are ideas probably that are already ingrained in him. They're certainly not foreign to him. Right. Right. So why not maybe do the dance? The you guys know uh, that comic uh, Dilbert. Did you guys ever read that? Mm -hmm. um, I can't remember the name of the creator, but the and this what I'm explaining now is why I'm terrified for this country going forward. I think we're completely screwed because he. So Dil, the, the Dilbert creator, he he did this real long essay, and it's so good you should read it. But it was called like two two movies, two screens, one audience, or something like that. And his thesis was that we're all as a country, we're all one audience. We're sitting in the movie theater, and we're all watching the same movie, but we're both com completely have a different interpretation of it. Like, it's, it's very straightforward. We should be able to say, okay, this is the part where, you know, it's revealed that the guy killed so-and-so, Professor Plum killed whatever, and, mm -hmm. the, you know. It, we should be able to say, okay, yeah, this is the, it's that predictable. We're all watching the same thing. But we're, co so my uh, example for this is, he, the Goya CEO was there to talk about how he was making it, uh, the president was making it easier for Hispanics and minorities mm -hmm. to go to school. Mm -hmm. To go to freaking school. Mm -hmm. But, like, that should be praised by everybody. But instead, we have half the country saying, oh, that's great. The other half of the country saying, oh, he's obviously racist. Like, what, what are you pulling out of it? How are you pulling this out of that? It's the same for uh, Hispanic communities, but they don't want to focus on what, what he's doing, actually doing for Hispanic com communities. He wants to they want to focus on a soundbite from the campaign trail about Mexico sending race, uh, rapists over. He wasn't calling the entire country a country of rapists. Which, no, he wasn't. Which, no, he wasn't. I mean, if you really are someone who has fled Mexico, you understand, you should understand how severe it is in Mexico and that there was complete truth to what he was saying. That's what I don't get is that there, I feel like there are a lot of, uh, of Hispanics on the left who they get this, they just want to jump to the defense anytime President Trump says something about, you know, people coming in through the border uh, or anything about illegal immigrants. And it's like, the people who came the right way don't want to see these people coming in the wrong way because they stood in line and they did it the right way. It's a slap in the face to all of the people who did it the right way. And I know plenty of Hispanics who see it just that way. Yeah. So, all right, we've got uh, more coming up, including my favorite Congresswoman, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, first, we wanna thank our sponsor, Gabby. So we're all looking to pinch some pennies right now, figure out where we can save. Uh, here's a good idea. When is the last time you looked at how much you're spending every month on your car insurance, on your homeowner's insurance? We don't look at that. We, it renews every six months and we're just like, yeah, okay, it, it increased, whatever. I'll just pay the extra increase because that's how everyone is. All right, well, you got to check out Gabby because you can see about getting a lower rate for the exact same coverage you already have. Gabby is not trying to sell you on any specific competitor. They're just giving you an apples to apples comparison of your current coverage with 40 of the top insurance providers. You got Progressive, Nationwide, 
travelers, all the top ones are there. All you have to do is link your current insurance account, and in two minutes, you will be able to see quotes for the exact same coverage you already have. Again, Gabby is not trying. Their goal is not to, like, switch you. They just want you to see and compare and make sure that you are getting the best deal possible. They typically save their customers $825 per year on the average, uh, and they will tell you if you're already in that boat of already saving the most money and having the best rate out there. You got nothing to lose. All right, two minutes of your life to make sure that you are not wasting money. We don't like to waste money, especially right now. All you got to do is go to Gabby.com slash Y. That's W-H-Y. That is Gabby.com slash Y. Back in a minute. On the subject of uh, boycotting and canceling, AOC, of course I mentioned, jumped on the Goya Foods boycott bandwagon. She tweeted out, oh look, it's the sound of me Googling how to make your own adobo, which I am sure that she would Google uh, because she has absolutely no idea how to do anything, including make adobo. Remember when she didn't know what her disposal was? Yeah. <laughs> Got this thing in here that you turn it on and it makes noise. I'm really scared. It's what is that? Terrifying. Yeah, it's a disposal pumpkin. It's, it's okay. Calm down. We've only had those since about 1965, maybe. I don't know. Ish. Uh, ish. Ish. You know. I, I didn't know what to take of that. I didn't know if she was actually being serious or if she was just trying to play to the. So yeah, I grew up on the streets, you know, and, and that's I we never had the any. The problem with AOC is you never know yeah. if she is that stupid. No, she's that stupid. <laughs> she is that stupid. Uh, which, by the way, you can find uh, my AOC mocking videos. Just a quick promotional plug. Uh, Sarah Gonzalez, unfiltered. If you have not yet subscribed on YouTube. You can go do that. Well, right after, I believe, right after tweeting about boycotting Goya Foods because he dared, I mean, he's, you pray for the president? What a, what a jerk. I almost said something that <laughs> caused me to be censored. Uh, AOC tweeted about cancel culture. Now, this has been a big topic this week. We had the Harper's Magazine letter that came out. Uh, we had, um, you know, Mount Rushmore. We had, of course, Goya Foods. We had J.K. Rowling. We had a lot. Um, but so AOC says... People who are actually canceled don't get their thoughts published and amplified in major outlets. This has been a public service announcement. The term cancel culture comes from entitlement as though the person complaining has the right to a large captive audience and one is a victim if people choose to tune them out. Odds are you're not actually being canceled. You're just being challenged, held accountable, or unliked. I have an entire TV network dedicated to stoking hatred of me. A white supremacist oh, with a popular network show regularly distorts me in dangerous ways and it's a normal part of my existence to get death threats from their audience. You don't see me complaining about cancel culture. And then she goes on. Many of the people actually canceled are those long denied a fair hearing of their ideas to begin with. Palestinian oh. human rights oh advocates, my. abolitionists, anti-capitalists, etc., etc., etc. And look at what she names. Palestinian human rights uh -huh. advocates. Yes. Th this is a hater of Israel yes. Yes. that we've scarcely run across yes. in office. Yes. Um, and anti-capitalists. Mm -hmm. I, she is just uh, so anti-American, so anti-everything that's good, right, and holy in the world that it's just, <laughs> it's unbelievable that she is in the U.S. Congress. I, ca I can't take it. And not just her, just since you bring up that point, not just her, but Ilan Omar as well, who oh, just yeah. this week made complete anti-American remarks. Uh, and then, you know, not to mention she's, what, paying her husband almost a million dollars in his consulting firm uh, for her work. But it's a great point. How are people like this uh, being elected and and running our country. I'd like to say that possibly that would get co uh, corrected in the next election, but I don't believe that. Oh, no way. No. Really. no mm. I don't believe it's getting it. Worse. And, and AOC yeah. had a lot of primary, uh, a lot of people primary here, didn't she? She had uh, at least one the people thought was gonna, going to be pretty strong, and he got crushed. I think it was 80 to 20. That's terrifying. Uh, or worse. Yeah, she's she's still, you know, you were hearing some rumor that maybe her her popularity was slipping because yeah. she wasn't paying much attention. She to wasn't her paying district. attention to her district. Remember she, that? yeah, and she ruined the Amazon deal, which I heard people in her district right. were not happy about. What, Twenty-five thousand jobs mm -hmm. um, that that was going to bring to the area, but it didn't hurt her at all yeah. in the primary. Yeah. What was her argument on? Did she say that people with large audiences don't get canceled? 
Yeah. Or is that what, was that like her first point that she made? She said uh, the term cancel culture comes from entitlement as though the person complaining has the right to a large captive audience and one is a victim mm -hmm. if people choose to tune them out. I saw one, one of the criticisms on the, on the Harper Magazine article was that they said that, oh, these people with large audiences, you know, up, up on their high horse talking about cancel culture as if they're, you know, they don't have any kind of, they're, they're not a, any kind of, you know, uh, you know, threat to be canceled mm -hmm. because they already have a built-in audience. And that's such bull crap. I mean, maybe for the left, because they'll never be canceled. All those people that were on the left, like Noam Chomsky, for crying out loud, he will always have an audience to the people that want to listen to him. They're not going to cancel Noam Chomsky. Mm -hmm. But you can be someone like Megyn Kelly, which can completely be dropped from your from your job, you know, effectively canceled, or any other the other people at Fox News that they've gone after and tried to cancel. Um, th they have they have held on by the skin of their teeth. You know, Megyn Kelly's doing her thing, but I mean, no. It, Absolutely. Anybody at the top, they are going for all of them. They can absolutely be canceled. Yeah, Pat, um, to Jason's point, you know, it's not just she says that uh, as though you have a right to a large captive audience. And um, but you're talking about people who it's not just that they're unliked. It's that they're unliked because they dare have a different opinion than someone else. Because mm -hmm. the whole entire, like the whole point of canceling someone is that you liked them. Let's say an actor, you really liked them and watching their movies before, but now you found out that they don't share your same opinion on everything that you think. You don't like them anymore. That's a little bit more than just we don't like you. Yeah, it is, and and it's also people are losing their jobs over this. People are losing their livelihoods over this, and she doesn't care about any any of it because she sh it's the left that's doing all of this, yeah. uh, and they're eating some of their own. I mean, J.K. Rowling got a little bit of uh, feedback on. I'm not going to buy your books anymore. I'm not going to see your movies anymore. By the time books and movies come out again from her, I'm sure that'll be forgotten. Right. But it's interesting to see that even. A progressive like J.K. Rowling can incur the wrath of these radical leftists who are trying to control every aspect of our culture. And if you dare say anything that goes against the grain, uh, you're just drummed out of society. And we, we, we can't have anything to do with you and you can't make a living anymore. R Rowling was one of their heroes for a yes. time. Remember when she, she she said that after the fact, she said that Dumbledore, Dumbledore was, was gay. gay. And they were like, oh, I lover. Love yeah, everything. That. Then yes, queen. Says one thing. Yeah, and then all of a sudden. That women are women and men are men. Yeah. Oh, Controversial. Oh, my. Which, really, okay, so Jason, you're the researcher at the table. Have you found any rhyme or reason as to how, because as Pat said, some of them do get get hurt by it. Some mm -hmm. They do eat some of their own, but the others are completely untouchable. And I always try to find a trend of, like, how they determine who is touchable and who is untouchable, and I can't seem to come up with one. Have you seen any? <laughs> well, I mean, the the LGBT, LGBT, Elemental P, yeah. the, their, their uh, lobby is so powerful. I mean, you really cannot go there. If yeah, you go there, you, true. you probably will get canceled. And we saw that and with- Especially right now with the trans situation. Yeah. Right. That seems to be the uppermost like the upper echelon of all the untouchables. Which is bizarre, because it's like- Very bizarre. What, what percent? percent of the <laughs> population. I, I'm really surprised that that is the pinnacle, though, of this whole intersexual PC thing, or whatever yeah. whatever it is. But, but that definitely is the king of the mountain right now. You would think right now it would be, you know, like racial issues, right. um, mm -hmm. black issues. But as we saw with Jimmy Kimmel, uh, he got called out for uh, wearing blackface. Mm -hmm. Um, it's totally fine. It was His apology, by the way, was actually very rude. Yeah, it, it, it was just <laughs> it like was not an apology at you all. Dredge this up, okay, fine. I'll acknowledge it. Yeah. You know, what I mean, the thing though with, with the Jimmy Kimmel skit, it was he was not trying to be racist with that. No, he was literally just trying to. But to their standards, to their it standards, absolutely it was. qualifies as right. racism. But uh, it might have been a little more than what Megyn Kelly did. But Megyn Kelly got canceled, you know, right. immediately for oh, it. It was a lot more a than lot Megyn more. Kelly did. I mean, he's mocking the voice of Carl Malone, which yeah. is, that is completely inappropriate now. You can't do that. And he was doing that and doing the blackface. 
And Megyn Kelly asked a question yeah. about blackface, yeah. and you know, that ended her. You know how, how far they've moved the Overton window on that is I actually forgot that Megyn Kelly didn't actually do it. <laughs> right. Like at the time, at the time that Jimmy Kimmel, at the time that yeah. Jimmy True. Kimmel came out, I was like, yeah, well, Megyn Kelly got fired. <laughs> and I'm, and then someone pointed out to me, they're like, That's you true. realize she didn't even do it. At she just <laughs> talked about it. At this point, you think I she forgot. showed up to work every day dressed in blackface. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, it's you Kelly. would think so. <laughs> I, re I was getting her and um, who is it? Who's on the View? Bette Midler. Oh no. Joy Behar, who, yeah. and uh, one of those. <laughs> and um, she had a picture it from like Joy. Halloween where she had dressed up as an, a beautiful African yeah. woman. Yeah. Somehow that's okay for her, by the way, as well. She yeah. didn't get canceled. But I think I was getting them confused, and I was like. Well, Megyn Kelly was just trying to be, you know, she was trying to be honorary. She didn't, and someone was like, she didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh she my just God. She question about <laughs> yes. it. Can you do that at Halloween? <laughs> and she's gone. <laughs> she, right. It's maddening. All right, we've got more coming up. First, we want to thank our sponsor of this segment, Real Estate Agents I Trust. Dot com. Uh, selling your home is a pain in the rear. And what also is a pain in the rear is trying to find a real estate agent in your area who really is one of the top agents who you know that you can trust to come in and get you the best deal uh, in your area who knows the best, you know, who knows those houses, who really knows what they're talking about, because everyone in their mothers now says that they're a real estate agent, but most of them don't actually know, uh, really have the expertise to be able to get you the best deal possible. Uh, all right, well, Glenn Beck's company, realestateagentsitrust.com, they've already done all the heavy lifting for you. They have vetted all of the real estate agents all across the country to make sure that if you go to their website and you type in your address and your zip code, they are sending you someone who they have already heavily vetted to make sure they are the experts in your area, in the area that you're moving to. Um, these are the top real estate agents and you are not going to you know, run into someone who at the end of the transaction, you're gonna be like, well, they totally screwed me. This is the biggest investment you're ever gonna make in your life. Make sure that you put it with someone you can trust. Go to realestateagentsitrust.com. It's right there in the name, all right? There's nothing more to be said. Realestateagentsitrust.com. Well, I think I saved the uh, biggest news for last. Uh, I think you guys would agree with me here sitting at the table. Uh, happening over our good friends in Canada. Well, Lauren Chen is a good friend. Uh, in Vancouver, investigators were uh, focusing very, very hard on a very important case going on down there. Uh, they actually, they have a rainbow, an LGBTQ rainbow uh, crosswalk that has been defaced. And when I say defaced, for those of you who are listening on podcast and not watching, I mean there is the most horrendous tire track <laughs> on this crosswalk in the middle of the street. West Vancouver PD tweeted out, investigators would like to speak with the driver responsible for defacing a recently installed pride crosswalk at 16th Street and Eskimalt Avenue. If you have any information, please call. And they did update us. They made sure to let us know there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of you know, unrest in the community over this. They said, <laughs> crosswalk update. We have identified the driver of the vehicle involved in the incident. Thank you for those who have come forward with information. My gosh. I'm 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 thrilled that they this person will finally be yeah, goodness, brought to get justice. A, get a felon off right. the streets. <laughs> uh, when will that crime spree stop? <laughs> how many, how many of the tire, tire tracks. How many tire tracks have they left around the city, I wonder? God, that'd on be how many different murals? Oh. I mean, if they do that to a Black Lives Matter as well, I mean they should they should not even get parole. What, ever. Did, what did they expect to happen when you put something in the street? That's yeah, why I'm like, they didn't expect get tire marks. A tire track on it. You really are. You might get a couple dogs walk across that. Maybe uh -huh. do wow. the unthinkable. Well, you know, people are wow. walking on it. I don't know if that's a good sign either. <laughs> right? Just trampling their feet all over it. What a weird, what a weird new thing this is. Of painting <laughs> stuff in the street now, and I guess it's sacred. You can't walk on that part. You can't drive on that part of the street. I don't know how you're supposed to turn. Yeah. How you're supposed to turn right. I, I truly don't understand the new rules. And, okay, so this kind of goes back to our first story with Bill de Blasio. He mentioned that Donald Trump said, whatever he said that Donald Trump said about it would be defacing uh, the street to mm -hmm. paint uh, the, the Black Lives Matter on there. 
I'm pretty sure he'd say the same thing if they wanted to paint White Lives Matter on there yeah. because it's not the fact of what right. it's saying. It's the fact that why are you painting in the street? Right. <laughs> I mean, we like so. At my my son likes we draw with chalk on the sidewalk, but that's because it washes it away whenever it rains. I would I can't imagine how pissed my neighbors would be if we just started like actually painting stuff. If I wanted to, could I just paint Green Bay Packers in the street and just do a tribute uh, to my favorite NFL football team? Are you calling it a protest? Uh, yes. Then I yes, think... it's a protest against the Chicago Bears. <laughs> Uh, so, yes. <laughs> then I think the rules are very okay. clear. Right. It's fine. Good. I'm I think it's totally that. fine. Jason, this is kind of goes right to your point before the break, which was the LGBTQ group has just elevated themselves somehow to become completely untouchable. And also, you're hateful, I guess, if you drive in the street. Yeah, I, I just, I just can't. I, I... <laughs> I just can't get over what they expected to find in the street. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I mean, you're, it's pretty. It's a common thing to find tire marks. You know, out in the street. I love the fact though, that they they check the CCTV cameras to find out which. That's car how they was. found them. <laughs> that's how. It, that's how invested in this case they were. Is they, they had some poor dude probably just out of the ca police academy, and he's going through hours and hours and hours <laughs> of TV footage to find out who peeled out on that little spot. Uh, I mean, what do you charge them with? Right. They said defacing, defacing property. Oh, hate crime. That's there it's was on the street. You can't. <laughs> you you can't. drive. They'll, they'll totally charge. I bet you anything. They'll charge him with a hate crime. That's what they did to. That was that other. They'll probably try. What was that? That, that couple that went out and tried to paint over. Uh, That's right. Yeah. To put all lives matter. Mm -hmm. and charge them with a hate crime. That's for that. right. And I don't think that was even sanctioned. I don't think that 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 mural. I like how they're calling block letters in the Mur street. A mural. <laughs> mm -hmm. Come on. Um, back in my graffiti days, we did murals. <laughs> this is not a mural. Um, but yeah, like, they're charging them with a hate crime for defacing graffiti and that's, that was in the u.s that's that's here in the yeah. u.s yeah. so yeah. you can do graffiti but you can't do other graffiti over the illegal graffiti Wait, well i mean that kind of goes right to tearing the statues down and stuff too it's just like sure. you're allowed to be completely lawless mm -hmm. if you're on the woke side of things well, as nancy pelosi said people will do what they'll do well the people will do what they will do <laughs> That's pretty good. It's go good. Dang. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. We got to take a break. We'll be back. It's you. Dang. So AOC and now Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. That's I'm, good. I've been working on it. <laughs> All right. Yesterday's poll. How much longer till things get back to normal? This is, this is a really depressing one. 53% uh, of you said never. Oh, wow. Never. We're never getting back to normal. That I, if you're right, wow. all right that's think, think really about, scary. Think about how far we've come. We, we've had conservatives that are like, you know, you'll never be able to tell me what to do. To okay, let, let's for the for the greater good, yeah. let's all give in. Well, I saw Sean Hannity doing it the other night. Yeah, he they've got a, a some kind of announcement from him that, hey, you know what? It's a really good idea. Wear a mask. Uh, and I'm like, really? Wow. Well, we, okay. One of the most conservative, I thought, governors in the entire country. Here in Texas, Abbott. Yeah. Is Abbott's freaked out yeah. for he's some not, reason. Yeah. I, I mean, love the guy, but he is freaked out right now. Yeah. And he's caving into some, you know, to some things that, that like Fauci wants us to do. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and it's weird to see. It's very weird to see. I, I was a fan of, of Governor Abbott, but he's lost me. And has anyway, he really completely? Yeah, he really has. I, oh, wow. I have, because of this? Yes. Because, mm. because I felt like. Okay, he wasn't the person who could stand up for principle like I thought he was. Yeah. I, and, and, and based on what he said two weeks before, I mean, right. what, two or three weeks before, he was like, you can't do a mask mandate. That's not enforceable. They can't, that's just not doable. And then he did it. And then he did it. And then he turned yeah. around and did it. Anyway, I mean, Chad it's, Prather, uh, 2022. It's one thing to be principled and to know it, which I think Governor Abbott does. Yeah. But it's a completely other thing to actually mm -hmm. have the courage of your convictions there. Which I, I thought he had. I don't know if he saw a number that shocked him so much that he flipped or what happened, or if he just doesn't want to be perceived as the guy who started this again. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Don't know. Uh, all right, today's poll, should local or federal government have the ability to mandate mask wearing? Now, they're, they're not asking you to choose between local or federal. They're asking you yes or no, should either government have the ability to mandate mask wearing. I know what your general, gentlemen, what your answers are. Let us know what you think at the Blaze, uh, the Blaze's poll that is at the Blaze. Don't forget the special 100th 
episode of Stu Does America. It's going to be Stu Does Power Hour. There's going to be lots of heavy drinking uh, involved. This guy's going to be drinking. I am not going to be drinking. So I'm going to be the smart one at the table for once. All right. You got to tune in. It's on YouTube only tonight.